Well, I'm here today to discuss some of the complexities of the transom on this 270 series Alden schooner that we're building. You know, these, these transoms are probably the most difficult thing to understand, to build, and, uh, and to get lofted. It's really kind of tricky. There's a lot to it. Many, many people, when they're doing a transom like this, they'll set the framework up first. And, I, you know, it's fine, but you have to do a really nice job of lofting it and setting it up because if it doesn't come out exactly right, then your transom itself is kind of subject to the framework. And uh, we didn't want to do that. What we want to do is loft it out properly, and then we made a plywood transom, laminated plywood transom, and uh, this thing is strong in itself, very strong. Uh, it's not going to rot. It's marine plywood. We're going to cover it with epoxy and all those kinds of things so we don't get moisture into it or anything like that. So we're not afraid of, of the plywood, uh, using plywood for a, a situation like this. Now, it does have a framework, like I said, put in, into it. It's nice white oak, quarter sawn stuff. This transom has got a hell of a rake on it. I mean, it's really raked out there. So every angle on this transom and every piece has got angles more than 45 degrees. It makes the pieces very tricky to cut no matter what you've got. If you've got a ship saw or a band saw, no matter what, yeah, you're in for a, a, a time on something like this. And, uh, you know, it's not causing us any trouble, but we had to think about it quite a bit. And uh, I guess we've got it figured out. So what we're going to do next is we're going to make the top transom framework right here. And uh, it's going to be on this line right here. This is the underside of the decking, that line right there. And uh, I know it's a little weak in the camera, but you can see it. And um, basically, the top of our framework is going to match up with that line. It's also going to come down and adjoin this piece right here. It's going to slam right up against that right there. And then it's going to be two inches thick or so. But uh, what we'll do is we'll cut a piece out of it so that we can put a plate across here and onto this piece here. So it's just a method of adjoining the two pieces together. You know, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll just cut this right through and butt this piece up against there and then put a plate on top of it. Well, that's fine too, but we're trying to make it look nice and neat, um, really for no other reason than to make it look neat. So that's what we're up to. And uh, I'm going to take a couple of patterns of this uh, piece that we need to make right here. First, I'm going to take a pattern like this. And the idea of that is to get the curvature of the transom like this, which we're going to cut into our piece first, inside and out. And then we're going to make a pattern like this. So we've got uh, basically two patterns that we're working with. This pattern that we're going to take flat, we're going to use an old method that you see used a lot of times on a loft floor. We're going to use sheetrock nails. We're going to put the heads on the line and drive the head into the line and then put a staple over the nail just to hold it nice and still so it doesn't move around. Then we're going to take our pattern and press it onto the nail heads and the nail heads will transfer a mock into the back of the pattern which we can just connect up with a line and then we're going to use that as a pattern to cut the next piece. I, I, I guess the thing to do here is just get on with it and that's what we're going to do. I've got Ken over here on this side uh, holding the piece. We're going to get past the center line a little bit like that and stand it up. Now it's 90 degrees to the transom itself. That's the way you have to take this curvature. It's also on an angle. We have no reason to cut it straight across the pattern to fit this way or anything else. This is the way we want it, just like this. So basically, all I'm going to do is take a pair of dividers, and I've got it set. I'm going to set a little bit wider than that, just about this space of midships right here, or the center of it. OK, we're just going to hold it nice and still, and I'm going to draw a line right through there, like that. Now let me swift hands, and I'm going to do this side. Now, this is the edge of the transom right here, just approximately, and that's the center line right there. So we can put it back in relative position after we cut it. Actually, you've got to transfer that line up here, and this one's going to have to be transferred up to here. Okay, so that does that. So now what we're going to do is take this, put it right up here, and I'm not going to go over to a woodworking bench or do anything like that. What I'm going to do is cut it right here on the scene and then trim it up and uh, fit it. So I'm just going to cut it off the length. So 
So there you have it. Now, I didn't make any attempt to cut that absolutely perfectly because I have a block plane and I'm going to trim it down to the line with the block plane. That's about the easiest thing to do. Let's get the blade to stick out a little bit more here. Let's try that. All right. In the block plane, I can split this line right in half. So, like I said, I don't have it fastened down against a workbench or anything like that. I'm kind of working freehand right here. And this is all it requires. That's it. Now we'll see how it fits. And it's supposed to fit like that. Now it's a little bit strong on the two ends, just a tiny bit. Let's try that one quick one. And then if I have to, I'll just touch it up again. It's pretty good. Maybe I'll take a swipe there. Maybe a little one on the end. Here. Okay, that's fitting pretty good. That's all we need right there. We got a mark on the end and can go back and forth a little bit, doesn't matter. Okay, so what we're going to do now is transfer that shape onto the piece of wood that we're going to cut out. Now it's time to make our next pattern. That one's done. So we've got sheetrock nails right here. I'm going to grab a little handful of them, tack these nails right on that line. Now, that line represents the underside of the decking, and uh, it was lofted to get that line. So, I don't want to go into exactly all the techniques that it requires to lift these lines out of the loft, but it's quite uh, complicated. It's much more complicated, really, than anything else in boat work, I think, making transoms and making them come out really nicely. So. We're using a lot of alternative technique and stuff here. We don't just do everything the way some people would think is the right way. There is no right way. <laughs> Get it done is the right way and do a good job. So that's what we're up to right there. Now we get another piece of plywood to make this one out of right here. And I'm going to stick it in there like that, cover the nails with my hammer, and we're going to set it in there just like that. Press it down. All right, now that's going to sit right there like that. I'm going to take a pair of dividers, just like that. Now, that's on the other side of the pattern that I'm taking with the nails. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut this right here, and then I'm going to cut it along the line up here. So when we put the pattern on the piece of wood, we can trace this line that we're going to have up here, but we'll have to add on to this an inch and a half wide to get it to contact here. Really no problem at all. So I'm also going to mark this. We need to have this piece to be approximately that long so it hangs over. We don't want to cut it too short. That would be a tragedy. So this end we can cut on the center line but we don't really have to. But we'll mark it for center and then draw a straight line across that and cut that. So. Let's take and flip it over and just see how we did with these nail things. Look at that, we lifted one of the nails right up and that's all fine. So what I'm going to do is mark these right here. See that one right there? I'm just going to put these little ticks marks on it so I know where they are. Like that. And that may very well be the last one right there. Next thing we've done here, we've set up a very temporary workbench. It's just a two by six across these two pieces right here that are stabilizing the transom. And I'm just going to use it 
to draw a line here. So I'm going to use these little nails on our marks just to hold the batten up against it. We don't really need to nail the batten down. We just need to push it up against the nails and then draw the line. And we're going to take this batten and pull it right up against the nails like that. And uh, you can see it going through the other ones that I didn't put a nail in perfectly. And all of these things don't have to be absolutely perfect, but they have to be pretty darn good. Otherwise, you have to double off way too much material. So we're trying to get it as close as we can get it. And that's that. So now, I can do the same thing right here. I can even pull this right back here. And uh, that's in the way a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to cut that right there like that. Now, we're going to touch that up a little bit with the block plane. And I've left all the lines so I can see the line. Once I cut over the line, I'm sunk because I have no reference then to plane it. I can't, I can't get it to fit after that unless I were to put it in place and scribe it. All right, it's going to fit pretty good. Just a matter of finishing it up, yeah. This is the way it went, like this, like that. That's right. And it fits. So I'm going to mark the end of it. We want it, I'm going to put a little mark right here at the end, but we want it to be this long. And we want it to be temporarily, it's going to get to the center line right here, like that. So there's the center. We're going to take these two patterns over to uh, wood and mark them on the wood and saw them out on the ship saw. So we've got both patterns right here. So that's our next move. Now, this is also going to get a knee right here in the middle that sits on top of the horn timber and goes up underneath this transom framework. Uh, you're not going to be able to see the top of the knee because we're not going to carry it all the way up to deck level. We're probably going to stop it down in here somewhere. And uh, we're going to make two notches in the side of the knee so that these two pieces sit on the knee, but the knee won't be visible from the top. So basically, we're going to join the piece that we make on this side to the piece we're going to make on this side first, and then do all the other cutouts after that. So, you know, basically, we're, uh, we're done with the patterns, just like that. Wasn't too complicated. And now we've got to get to work on sewing the piece out.